Okay, what I want to do here is I want to show you how to use Excel to do hypothesis testing. It turns out to be much easier by letting them do most of the hard work rather than having to do it out longhand. All right, first piece, significance level. This particular problem, we're going to do at 95% confidence, which means our significance level is 5%. That's very common for business problems, so you're going to be running into that one a lot. So there's our significance level. Now, this data over here, I've actually gotten out of the book, and it has to do with hours that people watch cable television and the hours that people listen to the radio. Now this might be important to find out if people listen to the radio or watch television more if you happen to be in marketing and you're trying to decide where to put your advertising dollars, whether to put them into cable television advertising or radio advertising. So what we have here again is data. This data is hours per week of television on cable versus listening to the radio. Now I have no idea who listens to the radio like 25 hours a week, but maybe some of you do, so this is the data we have. Now, in order to do this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, the data ribbon up here and then over to analysis. Now, we are doing hypothesis testing for the means, and this is to sample stuff. So, we've got four options here that Excel gives us. Paired two sampling, two sample assuming equal variances, two sample assuming unequal variances, and two sample for means. Now, let me just briefly tell you what they are. This two sample for means is actually a z-test rather than a t-test because somehow it's assuming that you know the absolute true God-given standard deviation for both distributions. That's very rare. Almost never happens. We won't be using that one too much. Then, these next two, two sample assuming equal variances, or two sample assuming unequal variances. This is when you've got data set up in two samples like we do, but you're unsure about whether you've got equal variances or unequal variances. Well, I suppose there are times when you might actually know that there are equal variances for both distributions, but that's pretty rare. So basically, we're going to be using this two sample assuming unequal variances or two sample for means paired. Paired means that you've got each observation represents one person or thing that's been observed twice. Well, right now I'm going to go with this two sample assuming unequal variances, so we click on that. Now what we need to do is uh, put our data in these input ranges, the variable input range. To do that you click on the little box right there and then you just highlight the area. Now go ahead and leave the label up here in the top because it turns out that the computer will keep track of which variable we're working on. When you've outlined it, go back here and click that again. Then for the second variable range, again, leave the label in and up here. Now, this hypothesized difference is how we've set up our null hypothesis. For two sample testing, almost all the time, we're simply testing to find out if the two are equal. Again, if we're in marketing, we want to find out if there are more people who watch cable television or more hours spent listening to radio. So our null hypothesis is that they are the same because we are looking for an alternative hypothesis, which is one is more than the other. We're not sure which is going to be more than the other one, so this is going to be a two-sided hypothesis test with the null being zero. So we have this hypothesis sized mean difference of zero. Now this little uh, checkbox right here for labels, I've checked that because when I put the variable range in, I included the names of the variables, television and radio. Again, this turns out to be kind of pretty because they keep track of it for us. Now alpha right down here is the significance level of the test. Again, I started by saying my significance level was 5% because it's a 95% confidence level. Now, down here for output range, where I want to put this is actually I think I will put this down here in this box right here for B19. So, go click on B19, there it is. All we have to do is click OK, and we've got all kinds of great work that's been done for us. Now, what they've done is they have found the mean, the variance, observations, hypothesized mean, uh, t-stat, and all the rest of it. <clears throat> now, because they've actually found the t-statistic, which is right here, 
and let me highlight that for you so you know what you're looking at. That T statistic is your test statistic. That is the test statistic on the null hypothesis that they are equal. You want to compare that <clears throat> to the critical value, which is found right down here. My critical value is 2.048. My test statistic is 0.6. My critical is 2.4. Comparing these, it's pretty clear that my test statistic, test stat, is smaller in absolute, van, absolute value than the critical value. Now again, my critical value down here is uh, this 2.04, so my test statistic is small, so it's going to mean that I accept the null hypothesis, but no manager, including you, no manager is going to want to hear, except the null hypothesis. So what you need to say is you need to give them a conclusion. Well, your conclusion is going to be that these are the same. So we have the same. No difference. Okay. So from this data, it looks like there is absolutely no difference as to the amount you listen versus the amount you watch. Okay. That's all the data is telling us. However, now let me go back here and kind of uh, um, show something to you. Because what I want to do is I want to show you what I did. And what I did was I hid some data. What I hid is if we go back up here and look, that this turns out to be paired data because I have individuals for each observation. For instance, observation right there is a single person who supposedly spends 22 hours watching television a week and 25 hours watching, listening to the radio. This person spends 47 hours a week listening to the media. I'm sorry, I think that's astounding. But anyway, that's what this is. So what we have here is we have paired data. Since we have paired data, it's incorrect to use this two sample assuming unequal variances. So what we really need to be doing is an entirely different type of analysis. So let's go do that analysis. Go up here to data, go up there to data analysis, but now we're not going to be using unequal variances, we're going to be using paired two sample for the mean. Okay, so now what do we want? Well we want our variable ranges. Our variable range for the first variable is going to be that. The second variable range is right there. And then what I want, hmm, sorry, my second variable range is right here. That's better. There, my second variable range is there. Um, I think I'll put my output range I think I'll put my output range right up here because that will show me an entirely different place for my data. Okay, so let's go back and fix this output range again. There's one of them. There it is. There we go. There. Now, what I have here is I now have my t-test for paired two sample for means. Well, my t-statistic here, which is my test statistic, is 2.35, which is actually larger than the critical value of 2.114. So here, in absolute value, my test stat in absolute value is larger than the critical value. So I reject the null, which means that these are not the same. If they're not the same, you have to decide which one is more. The way you decide that is you go up here and you look at the means. Well, looking at these means, the mean for radio is larger, which means radio is larger, which means if, say, the price of advertising was the same on radio versus television, then I would probably want to be advertising on the radio. Okay, so what did we just learn here? First of all, what we learned is that the uh, Excel program does all kinds of nifty stats for us and does them very quickly. So we don't have to mess with finding all these means and variances and, and uh, uh, standard errors and all that. So that helps a lot. 
But also what we found out is that it makes a big difference whether our two sample normal is paired or whether it is not paired but two separate groups. Two separate samples down here, it's very hard to get statistically significant difference. When it's paired, it is much easier to get statistically significant difference. So, if your data is paired, use that piece of information and get a more precise answer than if your data is not paired.